As the queen maker, I have spent a lot of time trying to help women understand why they're in the situations that they find themselves in with men. I wrote a book called 41 Shades of Men, The Pursuit to Subdue and Use You to help women kind of see their situations and the men that they were with. A lot of women probably haven't come across it yet. So maybe I can help you with some self-awareness by looking at other people's, other women's situations, and maybe you can learn something from it. She says, sorry, I don't know how to start, but let's say you and your boyfriend stay together and he works and pays all the bills while you're home taking care of the kids and the house. By the time you wake up until you fall asleep, you're tending to your kids and his needs and cleaning. And you make sure that the food is either ready, cooked or about to be cooked before he gets home and the house as well as his gaming area is cleaned. He doesn't do anything when he gets home, but play his game and eat and say how much you complain and don't do shit. Mind you, every mess he makes, you clean. Every time he makes himself anything, nothing ever gets put up and you don't complain. You just clean it and keep it pushing. Daily, you're constantly reminded daily about how you're a burden that doesn't do anything. And to add fuel to the flame, you just miscarried. And instead of him being there for you, he's at work and doesn't even check on how you feel or anything. So you get dressed up to make yourself feel better. And when it doesn't, you start drinking lightly. My question to you all is who's wrong and what would you do in this situation and what makes you a good partner? He pays all of the bills, which isn't much, and takes my car to and from work and pays for the insurance as well. So let me keep it a stack with you. Nothing is ever 50-50. The person who is complaining about a situation is the person who holds 100% accountability to change the situation. This situation here, he's rather happy with the outcome, which means he's not going to change anything. He's not the one making the post. She's the one who's making the post, which means that there is a problem in her behavior that is netting her an outcome that she does not like. Error number one, she absolutely knows nothing about the nature of men. She chose a man based on her idea of what a man should be, not based on what the man actually is. If she had even a basic understanding of at least just the archetypes of men, she would know that she's number one dealing with a family man. Now, the family man sounds like a good man until you get into the psychology of the type of man who would choose to be a family man. I think Sean Penn said it best in the movie Daddy-O. Yeah. I was talking about the suit, the car, the house, but it also includes the wife and the kids, the toys. Now, a lot of guys out there, maybe they did fall in love. Maybe they did really want to get married and have kids and whatever the fuck. But deep down, really being honest, looking like a family man is more important than being one. I tell women all the time that a man is never broke as long as he has a woman. So anytime you decide to cohabitate with a man, which is just like marrying a man, you take on slave labor duties to make his life more palatable and easy. Slavery is your job. So number two, where you went wrong, is you voluntarily agreed to offer yourself up as a benefits package for him to use because you wanted to manipulate him into performing the way you wanted him to perform for you and your fantasies. But rocking and rolling like that will always net you an L. The other type of man that she does not realize that she is dating is the narcissist man. This man gets with the woman intentionally to use her as a punching bag. So if you combine the family man with the narcissist man, which is what she has here. You get a man who treats the woman he's with like a slave and he intentionally beats her up psychologically. Number four, where she's going wrong, because she has zero self-worth, 
and is very desperate to have a man in her life. She has no boundaries and is willing to tolerate anything and cope with anything just to have him. So much to the point that she is now about to be abusing substances instead of making the logical and rational decision to up and leave. Number five, where she's gone wrong, is she can't see that it was a blessing that the pregnancy did not go to term, giving her an opportunity to free herself. But she can't because she can't see it. The person who is complaining is 100% responsible and accountable for changing the situation so it nets them a better outcome. Women want their cake and eat it too. You want to fulfill your desires, but you don't want the consequences that come with filling your desires. If you keep this man, you have to accept the reality that this is the dynamic and he's not changing because you are functioning exactly the way that he needs you to function in this relationship. If you decide that you don't want that outcome, you're going to have to leave and you're not going to have that man in your life. If you eat the cake, you have to accept the fact that it'll disappear. If you keep the cake, you have to understand and accept the fact that it'll rot. You can't have it and eat it too. Oh, last but not least, the sixth place that she went wrong is wanting a man to pay the bills while you just stay at home and have no other income coming in. You effectively trap yourself. So in this case, she is in the wrong because she's responsible for changing the situation. But instead, I bet she waits for him to change and puts all of her energy into begging him to do something that he has no desire to do. That man don't even like her.